we have a little bit of time left, and what we have left, we're going to shift a little bit. We've been talking about economics, which is really important and hard, which is why I asked Mark to come in when we're talking about economics. But another thing that historians do, because historians understand this is how things work, and they look back at the past. <laughs> they look back at the past, and they see these patterns. Another thing that historians do is they think about different perspectives. So, so far, if you're living in the eastern part of the U.S. in the 1840s, do you think railroads are a good thing? Yes. 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 Definitely. Why? What are some good things? How are you benefiting? Able to travel. You're able to travel? How are they benefiting, this family? They get, they get, they get new products. How are you benefiting? New customers. Uh, new customers? Uh -huh. Right? How are, you, how are they benefiting? Uh, not being a big idea. But but your business, you're, it's, you you're creating a place where you can get in the process and process and get some of that money, right? Get in the exchange, right? You're the middleman, right? That's, that's it's, and I, it's perfect the way you guys are all sitting because in in all of this, right? You got you got her, right? The rich. You got the the rich merchant who's kind of doing her thing in the middle. So you each of you is getting two maps, or. A map, one map and one graph. So as you get your map and as you get your graph, make sure you have one of each. Talk to each other about what you see, right? What are these graphs about? And how do they connect to what we're talking about? We want to put our students in the role of, of historians. And when historians are kind of looking at historical time periods, they look at it from many different perspectives. And so for a bulk of the class, we were looking at Western expansion as this amazing economic boom, and, and there's all of these opportunities from markets and you know all of these things, and it's great. But that's just a very small piece of the story. And so we thought it was really important to kind of get at a different perspective through the use of visuals. So we're going to do the lands held by Native Americans first. So first of all, what kind of information is on this, this map, this one? This one. How much they lost? How much they lost? How much who lost what? The land. The land. The land. Okay. So, what does this have to do with anything we've been talking about for the last couple hours? We've looked at a bunch of graphs. You guys have read a bunch of things. We've been talking about a whole bunch of things, having to deal with this expansion to the west, right? Of the United States as a country going from the thirteen colonies and more, right? And the, the involvement of the railroads and the canal system. So what does this graph add to that conversation? Well, we got half of the U.S. When? 1850. By 1850, it was half gone, right? And if you think about it, think back to the original graph that we looked at, right? We looked at it like, ooh, look at that. It was, we looked, the United States expanded to this, right? And this is saying the same thing, right? We, the United States expanded to this, but it's looking at the other side of it, right? There were a lot of benefits, economic benefits for some, but there's also this other side, same, same land, area. Uh, Lashana or Fabio, what did you just say your hands up? Uh, no, I'm saying, because I'm looking back on this. Please. If the, um, the Native American controlled the US in 1607, so in, in 1789 to 1840, were they still there? Because if there were 16... So, so, one, so the answer is yes. Um, even, the, even in Britain, um, control here and the Spanish? So England fought a lot of war. They, they, lots of people fought and took lands from the Native Americans. But one thing that, one thing that is not clear from this, and I, maybe is not, is not always clear, but it's Native Americans weren't one country of Native Americans. There were lots of different groups of Native Americans. Yeah. Right? So it wasn't like one unified, but they lived here. They were the people who lived here. So in 1607, what, anybody know what's significant? Why 1607? That's such a weird year. So that was when the pilgrims first came over. The first settlers started to come in 1607. That's why it's that. The rest of them are all even numbers, right? But 1607 is such a strange year. But that's a good, it's the first time that people from Europe came and set up shop. I mean, they set up settlements here in, in the land that later became the United States. How about the other one? The Buffalo population in the West, 1800 to 1889. That's kind of a nice, I'm sorry? Yeah, so we're gonna, all, we're gonna help each other read this graph. So that's kind of, we started today with you guys saying what 
was it like in the 1800s, right? And we're, we're, end, we're ending around 1880s, 1890s, towards the end of that century. So Buffalo population in the West in 1800. So if I'm looking at this graph, what do I see? What kind of information is here? So why is there this split? It's split because one is thousands, the other one millions. So can you talk more about that, Sandra? increase a lot. So they were counting buffaloes as a thousands, and, and it was such a high demand that the 1889 went to millions. Mm -hmm. Or, well, where did it start? Did it start in millions or in thousands? In eight, 1800, yeah, thousands, 50,000. So 1800 is right here. How much is it in 1800? How many buffalo are there? 30 million. All right, Mar I'm oh, No, no, we're, we're going to get to the split. No, I want to talk about the split. No, no, but it was a good question and we can't leave it until no, everybody I, got I it. I want to know how do you, how you get from 1800 to 30 million if the 1889 is the only line connected to the 30 million. So how do we get from an 1800, how do we know there were 30 million buffalo? Because of the dot is right? straight on the 1800. Mm -hmm. Even and if 1870 is right here. But it's not beginning. it's not starting from eighteen eighty nine, right? Those are years. So those years so think about the subway graph that we looked at. The subway fare. So it started in nineteen oh four. And how did you figure out how much it was in nineteen oh four? Well you looked at in that year what was the the cost. So here it's not cost, it's number of buffalo. But it's the same way. We start in eighteen hundred and figure out, so that's where the dot is. So what is that number there? So before we get to the line, we have to get the point. So that point is 30 million, you see that? I see that. So 1,800, there are 30 million buffalo in the West. Then the, the population of buffalo, what happens to it? What starts to happen to it? It goes down. Now the next year, it's very this graph is very specific. It wants you to read it in a very specific way, so it doesn't give you all the years in between. It says 1800, it's this. 1870, it's this. And so what is it in 1870? It's 15 million. It's 15 million buffalo. So what can you say about the number of buffalo in those 70 years? It decreased by half, right? Half the buffalo went away. So then the only other year we have is 1889. Now here's where it gets tricky because we have this, that weird, it's almost like the, the, it's a rip, it's a tear, right? So Sandra started to give us some clues about, well, what, how do we read this? So I want to talk about how we read it first and then we'll talk about why they might have done that. So she said something about millions and thousands, right? What is she talking about? Where, well, how does this graph help us read it? Natasha? The number of buffalo. So where is she getting numbers? Where is she getting thousands and millions? On the line. On the line. The left side of the line. From zero to two. The middle there's split. Thousands. So there's a split. So, but I don't see where is where is my thousands and millions? I'm looking in the middle. On the side. On the side. It's thousands on the bottom yeah. and millions on the top. So anything that we're talking about millions is going to be up. So that's that thirty. It doesn't say thirty comma zero 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 comma zero zero zero. It just says thirty because it says in millions there. Right. And down at the bottom it says thousands. So in 1889, how many? Zero. So it looks like zero, right? Because this graph isn't, because this graph is, that's between zero and 50,000, right? That 50 represents 50,000. So it's actually not zero, it's very close to zero, and I'm going to tell you a piece of information that's not on this graph, because it's pretty close to zero. In 1889, there were approximately 541 buffalo from 1870 to 1889, it goes from 15 million to 531, right? So again, it's just this huge, you know, you're like, it, you can't look at it and not be like, oh my God, what, hap what is that? What could explain something, you know? So, so it's very compelling. And the reason why Kate and I wanted to introduce the, the Buffalo population as it connected to Western expansion is because the Native American angle, right? Because we're creating, a, the United States is creating this 
the railroad lines and all of these, the development of, of this railroad system in lands that are occupied by other people. So you need to get those people out of the way. And so one way that these graphs both suggest is you kill the food source, that allows you to accomplish what you're looking for, which is to remove the people out of your way. So the population, in, from 1800, there were about 30 million. 70 years later, it was half as big. It went down by half. And then 19 later, years later, not even 20 years later, how would you describe the population of Buffalo in the West? Really low, scarce. Really low, scarce. Less scarce. than 1,000. So to put it in economic terms, anyone want to guess why this happened? Or anybody know? Demand. Demand. Yeah. Right? People wanted Buffalo stuff. They wanted Buffalo pelts. They wanted Buffalo jackets. They wanted, there was a whole market. Right? So people killed them all and sold them because people wanted to buy it. But why then, And what does it have to do with the railroad? And so that's my question. So why? That's to, to kind of put it all together. Does this, so this is sad and tragic, right? All these buffaloes, are, they're being slaughtered. There's very few. Now, today, I think there are about 30,000 buffalo in the, in the West. Um, but what does this have to do with that map of 1870? The railroad. This is exactly when we're talking about, right? We're talking about 1870 to 1889. So when you look at your two maps, we're talking about in between these two. That's when you right? started making the, the railroad to the west side. That's when we started happening. We started traveling the west. So why are we doing all this to the buffalo? Because they wanted more demands from the east side to get buffalo. We so part of it was this idea of demand. Excellent. Why else would they? Why else would the buffalo population? You got to work really hard to kill as many animals. Why? So what? What else might have got? There's this demand, but why else? Skin so skin products, market, all of that stuff. Maybe they started dying. Why would they start to die? Hold on. Or maybe they were using them to build the railroads? Oh. Supply is high. So I, I, that's actually an excellent guess. They are not good workers. They're not very cooperative. They're not like ox or, or things like that. They're bigger and they're stronger. And maybe that's a part of it. It's hard, maybe part of it is one of the reasons it's hard to imagine if you've never seen a bison. But if all of us ran at full speed, as fast and hard as we can, and threw ourselves into a buffalo, it would not do anything. Our combined, they, these are huge, 2,000 pounds. Okay, so right. I'm, I'm just gonna, can I jump in? Okay. And what? read a quote? Okay, yeah, 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 you can. All right, so this is a quote from Beartooth, a crow chief in 1867. He's talking to the white people. Fathers, your young men have devastated the country and killed my animals, the elk, the deer, the antelope, my buffalo. They do not kill them to eat them. They leave to, them to rot where they fall. Fathers, if I went into your country to kill your animals, what would you say? Should I not be wrong, and would you not make war on me? What's he saying? They were killing the animals, but they were not eating them. Well, why were they killing them? <laughs> exactly. Well, who does eat buffalo? I eat buffalo wings. Right? Dogs. <laughs> Right. So you kill the food. Pushing them out. Push them out. Right. Push them out. Right. So here's another quote. Mm -hmm. We will not have the steam locomotives which make a noise in the hunting grounds of the, of the buffalo. If the pale faces come farther into our land, be, there will be scalps of your brethren in the wigwams of the Cheyennes. I have spoken. The Great Father has made railroads stretching east and west. Those roads are the cause of all our troubles. The country where we live is overrun with whites. All our game is gone. This is the cause of great trouble. I have been a friend of the whites and am now. If, you're st if you stop your roads, we can get our game. My friends, help us. Take pity on us. That's no. <laughs> That's these a are, quote. These are quotes. That's someone who is from a, someone from the time. Okay, and now here's one more. This is from President Grant's Secretary of the Interior. The buffalo are disappearing rapidly, but not faster than I desire. I regard the destruction of such game as facilitating the policy of the government of destroying the Indians. 
their hunting habits, coercing them on reservations, and compelling them to adopt the habits of civilization. So what was the role of the US government in this? To kill the buffalo. To kill the buffalo. Why did they want to kill the buffalo? There were so many, they weren't that useful. OK. No? The buffalo are disappearing rapidly, but not faster than I desire. I regard the destruction of such game as facilitating the policy of the government of destroying the Indians' hunting habits. Why were they destroying them? Hmm? Mark said, right? Right. And just, just the thing that I, the reason why I, I thought that quote was really important for Kate to read is it wasn't an accident. It wasn't people like someone building a road. It was a governmental policy, right? That shift of expanding the, the, the 13 colonies was being driven by the United States government. It was a, it was a, it was a plan. We did it in the way that we did because we didn't, you could just say it. You can just have some students read something and say, the United States had a systematic plan and this was part of the systematic plan. But, but to just give them an opportunity to kind of just like look at information and to try to figure out how does this all fit together? How does this fit with, with this conversation we had on supply and demand and the rare, all of this, like, it's, it's complicated and it's messy and, and it's interesting, right? Because that's what historians do. They just try to look in as many as perspectives as they can and make some sense of it all. I think that that was kind of our goal, is to give them information and let them try to make connections. How do these things fit together? Rather than just saying, here's how it fits together.